Well, good morning everyone on this April 4, uh, 2017. I have a special treat for you today. And uh, just while the notifications are getting out there, I always like to talk about nothing for a little while uh, so we can get everybody on here. We're going to meet an astronaut today, uh, someone who was visiting the Creation Museum, and I pleaded with him if he would uh, let us uh, talk to him and he said, yeah, okay. No, he was, <laughs> he was very happy to do this. Uh, we have an astronaut who was with his wife and his children visiting the Ark, visiting the Creation Museum, and his name is uh, Barry Wilmore. Barry, yeah, they, they call you Butch too, don't uh, they? Navy call sign, yes, sir. So, that's Navy call <laughs> sign? Navy call okay, sign. so you worked in the Navy? Uh, I did, 30 years, indeed. I just retired uh, in December, uh, 30 years with the Navy. I'm, I'm grateful that the Navy allowed me to serve that long. So, And you still work with NASA? I do, yes, sir. Still in the same position. So let me uh, go through this. Now, you were a pilot on the space shuttle. I was. And you were a commander on the space station. Indeed, yes, sir. And you've been on a Russian... Uh, yeah. Spacecraft. Yeah, I launched on uh, Atlantis, the space shuttle Atlantis, in 2009. I piloted Atlantis for an 11-day mission to the to the space station, and then I started space station training to go and fly a Russian Soyuz. So a lot of training in Russia and actually different places around the globe: Germany, uh, Japan, and Russia, and of course in, in Houston, Texas, where we astronauts live and train. And then launched on a Russian Soyuz, indeed, to the space station two and a half years ago. Now, do you speak Russian then, or did, uh, did you have to speak some Russian? I speak a little bit Russian. I have a decent technical language, but uh, I can't tell you what's on, what, what they're talking about on the news on Russian TV. Now, now would it work if I was on one of those uh, spacecraft and I said, G'day, mate, hey, let's switch these switches on or something? I, I think I could follow that. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so, okay, the big question. Okay, everyone's wanting to know this. The big question. Oh All right. When you got up for the first time and you looked at Earth, was it flat? No, it was not flat. It was definitely round. I can, I can vouch for the fact that the Earth is, is indeed round. Uh, you know, at the speeds we fly, 17,500 miles an hour, you go all the way around the Earth every 90 minutes, and there's not a single corner anywhere on the Earth. You sure this wasn't done in a TV studio somewhere? <laughs> I tell you what, if they were able to make me think that I was actually off the planet and orbiting the planet, I, that, that would be an amazing feat in itself. But no, it wasn't in a TV stage. stage. So, <laughs> so the Earth is round. Okay, we verified that. What about, um, are you able to, when you're up there on the space station or the spacecraft, is there any way of verifying whether the Earth goes around the sun and the planets go around the sun? Or? Uh, sure, yeah. You know, the Earth or the space station is in an orbit that we call it an inertial orbit. means it's with respect to a star that's way, way out there. So if that's the sun, let's say, mm -hmm. and this is the Earth, mm -hmm. and I'm orbiting around the Earth, you can see I go to the dark side of the Earth and I get night, mm -hmm. and I go to the light side of the Earth where the sun would shine and I get day. But as I orbit around the Earth, you'll see I get to a point to where... Leave the sun there, oh, okay. where the sun doesn't set. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? We call mm -hmm. that high, it's a high angle off, high beta mm -hmm. we call that. So you see that. You see, you know, you, the sun just kind of goes around the horizon, kind of like it does in the northern or southern hemisphere during the winter or sub southern months, depending on what time of year it is. And it just goes around the horizon because it doesn't set, and as it continues around, you start to get the day and night cycles again. So, yeah, definitely the earth is orbiting around the sun. Wow, so <laughs> observational science, you're yes, up there. Indeed, indeed. You're able to verify all verify. this. Verify. Okay, so um, now you left Earth and you get up into space, and then did you look at everything and say, oh, wow, there must be a God after all? Uh, well, actually, no, I did not. Um, everything that I needed to know about my Lord and Savior, about God, is in Scripture. So I did not need to fly in space to learn anything about my Lord. Did I get a wonderful, special gift of understanding? Perhaps. I mean, just to be able to view the earth from that vantage point. I mean, you see the, the glorious variety and the colors, and, and just in, in just a couple of hours, you see so many different things of how the, the variety of the, of the creation on this earth alone. And uh, does that give you a unique perspective? Yes. Did it give me an understanding, a better understanding of my Lord? No. Because like I said, everything I need to know about my Lord is in the pages of Scripture. So... What did it feel like the first time you were blasting off to leave Earth? You know, I, that's one thing that is so difficult to put into words because you're literally leaving the planet. You know, when I launched on the space shuttle in 2009, if you counted the number of people that had left, I was the 505th human in the history of mankind that we know of to leave the planet. 
And uh, that's kind of in, in my mind, and I know that. And there's so many people that would love to be sitting where I was. And it was, it was very, very humbling. You know, the, the blue sky, it was a daytime launch. It was a light blue sky, and it just got darker and darker and darker. It started to leave the confines of the atmosphere. And then, of course, the engines cut off, and you're in space, and it's the blackest black looking into the space that you can imagine. And you can see the Earth going below you. And, of course, you feel the weightlessness. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. Right? That's the best way I can describe it, mind-blowing, just because of the realization that you, you're actually there. Yeah. You know, there are some atheists out there that probably would like to start a GoFundMe uh, fundraising uh, program to get me off the planet. <laughs> Do you think uh, they let me be on, on one of those spacecraft? And with the right training, do you have a technical degree and a technical background? There's, there's hope for all. Okay. Um, you, uh, so look, I might have a bit extra training. <laughs> maybe, there. maybe, maybe. I tell you what, you know, you mentioned the atheists out there. Um, there are. There are people that don't believe God's word. And um, I pray for them. Mm -hmm. I, I pray that the Lord would enlighten them, you know, except for God's grace, there go I, and because uh, I believe the Bible's true, and if the Bible is true, um, then, uh, then they're not in the place that the Lord would have them be. They're not able to fulfill the reason which they were created, and that is to glorify the Lord in all that we, all that we think, say, and do. And they don't, they're, not, they're not doing that. And, and that burdens me for them. And I, and I pray for them that they will be enlightened, that the Lord would touch their heart and touch their soul as he did mine and, and reach, reach into my wretched soul uh, like he reached into my wretched soul and, uh, and enlighten me and save me. I pray the same for them. Well, just as uh, we begin to uh, wind up here, maybe there's somebody who would like to ask you a question. Would you take a question oh if somebody asked you a that? question? Yes. Okay. Someone asked, okay. Did you find Noah's Ark? Uh, did I find Noah's Ark? I did take a picture of Mount Ararat, several actually, from afar as we were uh, coming up to it. You know, it's between the, what, the Black Sea and the Caspian Seas, and, and I could see it from afar because it kind of stands out, and I took, I zoomed in as close as I could. Uh, no, I didn't see the Ark, but I, the, the mountain's pretty amazing. But I heard you found the Ark yesterday. I did find the Ark yesterday. It's in Kentucky. It's not on Mount Ararat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, uh, was the Ark a little bigger than a space shuttle? It was quite a bit bigger. But, uh, you know, knowing the biblical dimensions and how large it, I mean, I've, I've done that study years ago and how, how large it would be. But to actually see it with your own eyes, um, it, it is truly thrilling to stand there and go, wow, that was something that, that Noah and his sons and maybe some helpers here and there did over a 120-year period. It's just, it's just amazing. Truly so is. what did you think of the Ark and the Creation Museum? Oh, it's thrilling. My daughters are seven and nine. I'm sorry, 9 and 12, they, they're growing, or 9 and 12, and uh, they loved it. They loved it all. Uh, we homeschool, we teach them God's Word, so to actually put eyeballs on some of the things that they conceptualized in their minds, they just thought it was fabulous, and so did I. So uh, you saw the exhibits about how Noah piloted uh, the ark? You, yes. You think it was a little easier than piloting a space shuttle? Uh, probably. <laughs> no, probably not. Probably not. He had a lot of responsibility. Yes, yeah, piloting space shuttles a lot as well, but when you've got responsibility like that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's big. Okay. Are there any <laughs> other questions there that people want to ask? I mean, there's uh, various comments. There, there's lots of comments there. Yeah. Uh, well, do you, do you go around speaking as an astronaut and as a Christian? Uh, I, 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 I speak as an astronaut. There's certain things that I do and don't speak as an astronaut. And I do have the, the leeway, if you will, to go and, and share my testimony. And obviously, um, I would be asked to share my testimony because of my position. Right. I, don't, I don't push my my faith, my, what I believe in anything I do with my, with my professional work. I right. don't let those cross. There's no reason to, for the, to do that, so I don't. But uh, when the Lord gives me opportunity to share his truth, I do that. Just like any, I'm free to do that, just like any, any, you know, any person in the nation. So, yeah. Now, our, uh, our local baseball team, the Reds. Loved them when I was a kid. Big Red Machine. Do you still love the Reds? Them? I do. I do. Well, do you like a Reds fan? I, I am. I'm also a Braves fan. I, lived, okay. I grew up in Tennessee, so we were just kind of equidistant apart from both teams. Okay. But, but then the Reds were the big, big one that I followed. So, yeah, I'd love to see them win. <laughs> I'd love to go gone to the, to the opening day, but I was busy yesterday here. So. Yeah, you were, <laughs> you were busy seeing the arc, finding exactly, the arc yesterday. Exactly right. Exactly. Well, uh, it's been really thrilling, and what a, what a blessing, what an opportunity uh, to speak to somebody who's been up there in space and who's able to see that the Bible's right because yeah, it talks about yes, sir, you know, it God it sitting on the circle of the earth and because the Bible talks about a spherical earth. And you're yes. able to verify that. Verified, yes. So sir. the Bible is right. <laughs> the Bible yes, is sir. correct. And uh, it's thrilling to have you here with us. And I uh, trust you enjoy the rest of, of your time here as well. So yes, we'll sir. sign off here from actually, we're in Legacy Hall uh, at the Creation Museum. And thousands of visitors are pouring in every day to the Ark and the Creation Museum. 
and much to un, uh, much to the sadness of of the atheists who don't want that to happen. But it is happening. People coming from all over the world. Uh, so everyone, have a blessed day.